Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. Scala 3 should come out at the end of this year with a ton of improvements, and among them is an overhaul of implicits. Now, even though software estimations can never be trusted, I believe it's a good time to start playing around with some of these new features. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. Alright, now about a year ago I made a video about implicits and in that video I said that Scala 3 is going to come out soon with a ton of improvements for implicits and then when the day comes I will for sure make a video about it. This is not that video. I'm recording this video at the end of May 2020 and Scala 3 is not out yet and even though most things have stabilized I don't want to rush anything. So this is not going to be a full-blown Scala 3 implicits tutorial. We're going to do that some other time. That said, I just made five videos about Tegless Final and so I decided to record an extra video which highlights the relevant improvements in Scala 3. If you haven't seen those videos, don't worry, we're gonna start from scratch today. So assuming that you're familiar with Tegless Final, or at least type classes, you should be good to go. And I hope I don't need to say that you need to be familiar with implicits in Scala 2, watch my video for that, and probably you should also be comfortable with parametric polymorphism. As in most of my videos, I'm using Ubuntu 18.04, which runs in a virtual machine, and I'm using Windows as a host, which gives me virtual desktops, which shortcuts that allow me to switch between Windows like this and back to Ubuntu like that. Now, usually in my videos, we start from scratch. We usually start with one of my Jitterate templates, but in this case, I didn't want to waste your time, and I set up two identical projects. One is going to be for Scala 2, it's called Implicits 2, and the other one is going to be in Scala 3, and it's called Implicits 3. And I'm also using Workspace in Ubuntu, so if I go down like this, it's going to look exactly the same but this is going to be Scala 3 now and if I go back up it's going to be called Scala 2. Well it's called Implicits 2 but it's a Scala 2. Now let me walk you through it. This is a very simple build. It's just it's just a main uh, but it's actually a multi-build right. So we have a sub-project called main and we have a sub-project called FP library and main depends on FP library. Apart from that there's there's nothing else right. So FP library is currently empty uh, over here in the main we have the we have just the main method and we have exactly the same setup in um, uh, down there in Scala 3. All right. Now, in terms of versions, uh, so as I already mentioned, we are recording this at the uh, I'm recording this at the at the end of May uh, 2020, and we're using Scala version 2.13.2, and we're using which one are we using? Um, we're using 0.23.0 uh, for um, for Dottie. Uh, by the way, one thing to know about Dottie is that even though it's unstable, uh, they they still have stable versions and nightly versions, right? So as of right now, there's already 0.24.1 RC something or whatever. All right, so uh, we're gonna stick to uh, to stable versions though, and also uh, Metals uh, finally supports um, Scala 3 a little bit. All right. Cool. So let me close this one and let me close uh, that one. What we're going to do today is we're going to have two examples. One is going to be large and it's going to spend pretty much the entire video and the other one is going to be pretty small but also very, very re irrelevant. All right. So uh, let me first uh, type out the entire example in Scala 2. It's not going to be a big, big example but we're going to spend a lot of time um, talking about it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to FP library and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it DSLs. Scala. All right, so as, as already mentioned, this is related to Tegless Final. Uh, however, pretty much until the end of the video, we're not going to do like anything like hardcore Tegless Final. So it's going to be called DSLs, and we're going to have the typical functor in there like this. And we're going to do that map AB. As always, we did this so many times already in my videos. This is going to be FA, F of A. It's going to be AB, function that goes from A to B, and it produces, it produces F of B. All right, we're also going to go and we're going to have an applicative. That's all that we're going to have, right? We're going to have just these two traits. So if you're not like super familiar with Tegless Final, uh, you should, it should be good enough to, to follow. All right, so we're just going to have pure, which is a typical constructor. Okay, so we have just, just these uh, two DSLs and it's very common to uh, add syntax to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to create a package object. All right, in fact, uh, I believe for this one, I can actually say a new Scala file and I'm going to say a package object. All right. Great. So uh, what we're going to have here is we're going to have final implicit class. Okay. We're going to have functor ops. Okay. So it's going to take an F. This F needs to have a functor and there's also going to be an A. All right. So we're going to have a private, private val FA, which is FA over here. Okay. And it's going to have map, which is going to have a B. It's going to take the function AB, goes from A to B, FB. All right. It's going to get the fu functor implicitly. Please give me the factor for f so that I can call map, so that I can call map, 
give it FA and AB, right? So if you have never seen this before, uh, I, I mentioned this already in a bunch of my videos, but essentially the only purpose of this is to split the F of A, right? Which, which would usually come as a first parameter from the actual function that comes in um, in the second parameter, okay? And then instead of like doing this, you could just, you could just say FA dot map AB as you would usually do. All right, let's also add the other one, which is going to be final implicit, implicit class, any ops for A. It's gonna take the private val A, which is an A. In this case, we can actually extend any val. Any vals are very, very much constrained. So in this case, there is a second parameter list, which is implicit where the functor comes in, and therefore we can't use any vals. But over here we can, all right? So it's gonna have pure, all right? And it's gonna take the applicative, all right? It's gonna take the F of A, all right, it's gonna get the applicative, applicative, right? A bunch of boilerplate, okay? All right, and here it's the same thing, right? So instead of getting the applicative and then calling pure on it, you could just, you would just be able to say a dot pure and then pass in the F, okay? And notice one thing, it's gonna become important uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, but over here, like uh, this one is a syntax for the F, okay? And this one is a syntax for the A, right? It's gonna become important in just a couple of minutes. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the main over here in implicit2. I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it maybe. Okay, so we're gonna have our own version of option and I'm gonna use the same names that are used in Haskell. So in Haskell, an option is called maybe. All right, so over here, we're gonna import the FP library. All right, and by the way, I prefer to have my packages like this. All right, so we're gonna have a typical ADT, sealed abstract class. If you have been doing Scala for more than 10 minutes, I'm sure that you're familiar with options. All right, extends product was serializable. By the way, uh, let me show you something about this, right? So this is like a, one of these like a common folklore things in Scala uh, that you add like these two things uh, to an ADT so that, um, so that the type inference uh, works a little bit better. Um, there is an um, improvement uh, proposal over here which was literally, which was literally came up like 22 hours ago, right? So the night before I decided to record this video, uh, which basically suggests to add something to Dottie and finally it's something that is not controversial. So I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be added, maybe even in Scala 3.0, right? Uh, so you would be able to uh, mark certain traits as shapes, uh, probably was using this syntax, probably by using, by, by saying something like super trait instead of just trait, okay? And in this case, what's gonna happen is that it's still gonna be a trait, but its type is going to be erased. I should probably not use the word erased. Erased has a very specific meaning, but basically this type is going to disappear. And therefore, if you're gonna say something like, okay, this is gonna be an X with an A with serializable, this is pretty much the new syntax for, for uh, with, but it's commutative, uh, commutative, okay? Then the type that will be inferred over here is going to be just A, the serializable is gonna be dropped, right? So the trait is still there, but the type is not, okay? I'm gonna leave this link down in the description. All right, let me go back. There is a reason why I'm including this, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna show you this uh, a bit later in, um, you know, once we're gonna get to the, uh, to, to this color three version of this, all right? So over here, we're gonna have an object maybe, maybe, oh, come on, uh, object maybe, and over here, we're gonna have a final case class. So sum is called adjust in Haskell, all right? Plus A, A comes in, okay, extends extends maybe by the way usually when i'm typing out my ADTs, very often like you know when i'm at work i'm, I'm very often forgetting this and uh, this actually got improved in um, scala 3. all right so we're gonna have nothing nothing is the version of none but uh, scala also has a nothing which is a type okay so uh technically if i type in nothing over here then uh, it will be fine because the, uh, the 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 values like nothing and the type like scala nothing they exist in two different namespaces uh but just to avoid some confusion i'm also going to do scala that nothing over here all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to have the implicative for for maybe okay so we're going to have i'm going to call it dsl uh, applicative maybe by the way usually uh people call this interpreter but if you have seen my tagless final series actually the, the type over here is the DSL, right? So the interpreter is the implementation, but the type is the DSL. Therefore, I'm using, I'm, I'm calling my variables like this, okay? So I'm gonna do a new applicative for maybe, and if I do that, then Metal should help me implement the methods. Yes, there we go. All right, so let's do this, let's do that, let's swap them, okay? Right, because I, I prefer to have pure uh, on top, even though, you know, applicative technically extends functor. All right, so the pure is just a typical constructor. So we're gonna do just A, okay? And over here, we're just gonna match on the option, match. And we're gonna say case just A. Then we're gonna do pure. 
ABA. And if it's nothing, then it's just going to stay nothing. All right. Nothing super, super crazy. All right. So let's go to our main method and throw out the print line hello world. And so while using the syntax, right? So if we import, import FP library, then we could do something like print line 1337 pure maybe dot map plus one. Okay. And we could also uh, use the infix notation over here. We can do map plus one. Now, the reason people actually like this syntax is because it's so much more convenient. So let me show you the, um, you know, if we didn't add uh, add the syntax to to the package over here, if we, if we, ha if we hadn't done that, then uh, it would look like this. Okay. The first thing would be we would get out the DSL applicative, maybe. All right. We would get it out implicitly applicative for maybe like this. And then we would create a maybe, maybe int. Okay. We're going to use the DSL. We're going to call pure 1337. Okay. And then we would use the DSL again, which is why I introduced the variable. I was forced to introduce the variable. We're going to do map and we're going to do maybe over here. Like in this case, I wasn't forced to introduce the variable, but still. Okay. So this is the, the, the old syntax, right? But the results are obviously exactly the same. Cool. So I assume that you're familiar with most of this stuff at this point. Let me recap. So we have the DSLs like this and we have the, um, the object oriented notation for them, right? So basically just a better syntax and we have the maybe, okay, which just, um, maybe I can have a bit more space over here so that we see the whole thing like this. Okay. We have the maybe, right? So that it doesn't collide with options. So we can just play, play around with it. And we have the main where we're just creating it and printing it out a little bit. Okay. Now, one of the goals for Scala 3 is to be very, very much compatible with Scala 2. So all of this code to its last pixel is going to compile in Scala 3 as well. So let me literally copy everything to Scala 3 and I'm going to cut it out from the video so that we don't waste any time. All right, so this is still the Scala 2 project. And if I go down like this, and you're going to see that I copy pasted literally exactly the same things, DSLs, we have the notation, we have the maybe, we have the main, and it works exactly the same. All right, the only difference is that I called the package implicit 3 so that, so that you kind of see it a little bit more. Uh, we're probably not going to jump too much uh, back to Scala 2 at this point. We're, we're probably going to stick around uh, in this project. All right, so the first thing that we're going to realize is that Scala 3 allows you to have definitions outside of objects, classes, or traits. So for example, if I go to DSLs over here, uh, we can just go and do something like val x while x equals 10, okay? This compiles, this x is accessible by doing something like fp library dot x, okay? I'm not gonna show this to you. So basically this means that we actually don't need package objects anymore. So I can just um, cut out all of that stuff. I can put it into DSLs. I can just remove the entire package file. Just move to trash. Okay, so we just have like these DSLs and everything still works exactly the same. The next thing that we're going to talk about is implicitly. Implicitly is just a regular function which is defined somewhere in pre-dev. I'm not sure why I can't jump in there, but uh, they added another one which is called summon. There was a lot of conversation about this uh, in the beginning. They said, let's call it if the, now it's called summon. So let's go and use summon. Summon over here, summon over here. And I believe we're using one in main as well. So it's going to be over here, summon like this. Let's go back to the DSLs. Now, as I already mentioned, one of the goals for Scala 3 was to be very, very much compatible, source compatible to Scala 2. Uh, however, probably in Scala 3.1, whenever it's gonna come out, uh, this syntax is going to be deprecated. So let me show you the new syntax. However, I was having trouble when I was trying to convert the syntax to the new one, one-to-one. -one. Uh, one of the things that I was forced to do was to move this functor down to this map. So this is what we're gonna do now. So uh, let me remove it from here. And instead we're gonna have it over here, uh, right? We're gonna do implicit. I'm gonna call it functor, functor for f. Okay, notice that we cannot use a context bound over here, even though context bound still clearly exists in Scala 3, but we cannot use it over here because we would need to put it on an f, but the f comes over here. Okay, so we're gonna do this, but it's gonna compile exactly the same. In fact, let me create actually a bit more space like this. All right. Now, one of the uh, cool new things that um, that come in Scala 3. So first of all, uh, you know, in Scala 3, we're trying to get rid of the keyword implicit. So instead of implicit, we're going to say using, right? But it's going to be exactly the same. As you can see, Visual Studio Code is not super ready for, um, you know, for the syntax highlighting, but it's going to be exactly the same. And also, and also notice that um, obviously we could use the name functor over here. Okay. But if we didn't want to use the name, there are many situations where we don't want to use the name, then uh, we actually don't need to have a name over here, right? We can just say, uh, uh, please, I just, I just need to have a functor in scope and I don't care how you're going to call it. All right, so let me show you the new syntax. So I'm just going to comment these guys out, okay? And over here, I'm just going to type exactly the same thing with the new syntax, okay? So uh, we're going to say uh, given 
functor ops. Okay, so when you say every time you say uh, something like given, um, then behind the scenes, what, what's actually happening? Because it's not it's not happening like one to one. What is happening over here? So behind the scenes, it's actually doing something like this: implicit val. Okay, and it's going to be called in this case functor ops. Okay, and it's going to it's going to uh, take in an f. Okay, because it's going to take in an f, it can be a val. Okay, and it's going to return something and basically it's going to return like an anonymous class for this. Okay, so just so that you kind of like get used to this. So implicit DAF or implicit val is a given. Okay, you can give it a name, but you will see later that you also don't need to give it a name sometimes. Okay, so uh, this is how it starts and it's going to be a functor ops for any ref, any ref like this, and it's going to have a function. A, B, that will take AB, it's going to take this F, F of A, okay? And this is going to be the, the, the weird part. I mean, it's, it's already, it's already kind, of, kind of weird because we don't have a name here, right? So compare this like to this, okay? First we, we have the name, right? And then we, we have the, um, the parameters, the type parameters, and then we have all the, um, you know, all the regular parameter lists. Now in this case, it's the other way around. Like usually like the name would be here, right? But in this case, the name is over here and you can also use some, sometimes use a dot, okay, like this. So we're going to say map, okay? And then we're going to have basically the rest of it. So we're going to do this, okay? Like that, all right? Actually, not the rest of it because at some point we still need to say that, that we want to use the functor, okay? So we're going to need this guy as well, okay? So we're going to have that, all right? And the implementation is exactly the same as before. In fact, I can copy this and I can just go and put it over here, all right? Now, assuming I didn't make any typos, let me also type out the other one. Let me actually scroll down a little bit so that you see. Let me actually close this so that you kind of see both. All right, cool. So I'm gonna do uh, given, given like this, um, applicative ops like this for a right so as you can see like over here with this syntax you see it a little bit more that it is swapped right so over here there was a syntax for an f over here it's a syntax for an a all right so I'm gonna do s any ref like this and we're gonna have a def that is gonna take an f over here context balance still exists okay so we can do applicative and they will still exist in even in Scala 3.1 okay applicative a comes in okay so over here we're gonna have pure or dot pure right so you kind of kind of read it like as if you know you're gonna have an a and you're gonna be able to call dot pure on it over here you're gonna have an f of a you're gonna be able to call dot map on it okay I'm not gonna use the uh, dot over here okay so it's gonna be pure it's gonna produce an f of a okay and the implementation is exactly as down over here. All right, let me see if I made any typos like this. And uh, yeah, something is still something is still wrong. All right, so something is wrong, but it's not because I made a typo. So um, these givens, right? So they're technically the same as implicit val or implicit dav, but in Scala 3, you need to be a bit more explicit about them. So when we import FP library in main, it's not gonna be enough. So when we import FP library in main, we're importing only these. We're not importing the implicit ones, the given ones. So we need to be explicitly, to explicitly go over here and we say, Okay, sure, we want to uh, import everything, but also we want to import all the given ones, right? So, for example, we want to import all the givens for any rafts, any raft, and everything else. Okay, so if I save this file, it should be fine now. And you can also say, just give me like all the, all the given ones, like this, right? So this is going to be like the, the syntax from now on. By the way, for some reason, I didn't manage to uh, import them by name. So uh, let me try that. Maybe, maybe today it's going to work for some reason. So if I try to do that, and I also try to do that... Oh, okay, so today it works, but this, this other time it somehow didn't work, okay? Cool, so uh, this works, and um, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is that for the functor, we actually don't need all of that stuff. Look at this, so I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna go to the map, okay? And I'm actually gonna duplicate it, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing as I, as I did before, so I'm gonna cut this out, and I'm just gonna put it before the name, right? And now it's gonna look pretty much exactly like this one, okay? Right, and if I just comment this one out, or I'm just gonna remove it, okay? It's not gonna compile in the maybe because the signature changed now, so we need to go to maybe and do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna mark these, cut them out, go before the map, paste them in, and now everything compiles the same as before, so now we don't need to add this extra syntax, okay? So I'm just gonna remove this. This one tiny, tiny thing is enough, and also notice that the old syntax still works, right? So you can still use the old dot map, and you can use the, the new dot map, right? So you can, you can use um, uh, both versions, which is super, super cool. Let me remove this one. 
And also, at this point, um, there is no need to assign a name for this given because this is the only given for the any ref. So we can just remove the name over here. Okay, this is also why the type imports exist. Okay, so remember in the beginning I said you can just import the givens for the any ref. Okay, and so it doesn't need it doesn't need a name. And by the way, for um, for this one, um, how can I show this to you? Uh, let me import fp library without the givens. Okay. Okay, so this means that these guys are not, the, the pure is not going to compile. Okay, but I still should be able to do something like print line maybe dot map plus one. Okay, so on the functor, I'm still allowed to call map without importing the givens. Okay, uh, let me revert that, revert that, and that. I should have probably pressed control Z instead of that. All right. So let me do, uh, please give me all the givens, even though we have pretty much only one left, the one for any ref. All right, cool. So let's go back to the DSL. All right, now let me remove this empty line real quick. So the thing is that if we do this for, for applicatives, um, you know, this version where we uh, move these guys to the front, it's going to compile. All right, let's go to maybe and do exactly the same thing. So it's going to do that. All right, so it did exactly the same thing. But now, if we go to the DSLs and we remove that one, we're going to see that this is actually not enough, right? So it's not, it's not working, even though it compiles. Like, in my opinion, it probably shouldn't even compile, uh, but hey. So uh, let's revert this. Let's revert that. Okay, and revert this one as well, like that. All right, let's go back to the DSLs. Okay, so and again, it doesn't work because this is an implicit for this is an, this is um, these are extension methods for the A and not for the F. This is why it doesn't work over here, right? So you're still forced to do something like this. Now I'm actually going to go on a tiny tangent over here. You can skip this part if you if you if you don't want to. But uh, usually the way you would do extension methods is this. Like usually if you don't have uh, you know type parameters, then this thing is enough. Look, so we're going to go uh, over here, for example, right? We're not inside of a trade or a class or an object, and we can just uh, define a method, right? So we're going to call it you know do stuff, and it's going to take an s as a string, and it's going to produce a string. Okay, and all it's going to do is it's going to say s plus I'm doing stuff. All right, and so uh, if you go to the main and we go over here, for example, and we're just going to do something like print line, what are you doing? Question mark space, and we're going to call the method uh, that I call do stuff like this. All right. Then if we go back to the DSL, and if I just swap these guys out, right? So we're not in a trade, we're not in a class, I just swap these guys out. The old syntax still works, right? So this still works, but now I can also move this do stuff to over here, dot do stuff, like this, okay? So this is the new uh, new way to, um, to, to create this object-oriented syntax, right? So instead of going through like these implicit classes, you can, uh, if you have like, complicated type parameters, you can use something like this. And if you don't have complicated type parameters, then you can just throw like this tiny def somewhere, right? Which is super, super convenient. Uh, let me throw this guy out real quick. Let's go to main. Uh, let's throw these guys out as well, like this, okay? Now, in the future, you would, would be able to do something like this, right? So basically, this is a um, this is a, a current applica application of type parameters, right? So one type parameter is over here, the other one is over there, which is similar to what we were doing here, right? So one part was over here, and the other the other part was over there. I'm pretty confident that in the future, you will be able to do something like this, where you're going to be able to say that A is just going to be here, right? And so instead of instead of these like uh, four lines, you will be able to do just these two lines. As of right now, this doesn't compile, and I'm 100% sure that they wanted to get it into Scala 3, but they, j they just ran out of time. And and who knows? Like maybe even um, fixing like like moving these guys around, maybe even this one will be enough. But but I don't think that this will be enough. Okay. So uh, let me remove all of these guys. So this is pretty much all that I wanted to have. And now everything should go back to normal. All right, so we're pretty much done with improving the DSLs. Uh, let's go and see what we can um, improve for maybe, right? Because this video is not only about implicit, this is about like, you know, um, the typical application that you would write in a, in a tagless final style, uh, but we're gonna go through like uh, all of the improvements. Now, one of the cool things that uh, came in Scala 3 is a is a better syntax for, um, for ADTs. Now, unfortunately, it was sort of marketed as a better syntax for enums. Um, however, 
However, it is actually way more powerful than enums because an enum implies that you can enumerate all the values. However, we can encode an ADT like maybe with this new syntax, and so we're going to use the enum keyword for, for that. Uh, I kind of wish that this this um, this keyword was called ADT or something or GADT. Okay, so uh, basically, if I comment this up, comment that up, comment that up, instead of all of this, we're just going to say enum maybe plus a. Okay, and then inside of it, right, so without like having a companion object, uh, inside of it, we're just going to say case. Instead of like final case class or case object, we're just going to say case. Just a, notice that we don't need to specify this generic parameter or anything like that, and case nothing, right? So this entire thing, including the product and serializable, it's already part of, part of, uh, part of here, part of this, okay? So these like couple of lines, right? I mean, in terms of lines of code, it's, it's exactly the same, but the lines are, are, are much shorter, right? So it's going to behave exactly, exactly the same. Okay, let me throw these guys out like this. Okay, and uh, also we learned about about the givens. Okay, so over here uh, we can go and we can use instead of implicit val DSL, uh, we could just do given like this. We don't need to give it a name. We're just going to say given implicative for maybe. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So now we can take that stuff like from here to here. Right, we still need the curly brace. Right, we can remove this stuff and it's still going to work exactly the same. Right, so let me indent this properly, like, like that. Okay, so everything is a little bit shorter now, and we can also indent this a bit more differently, like this. All right, cool. So if I do that, this is the whole thing. So it's a little bit shorter now. All right, now we're pretty much done with this example, at least with the implicit part of this example. We're still going to have the second example at the end of the video, okay? Uh, but we're not done with improving everything, you know? Like, well, let's, let's push it to the max. Let's see, like, everything that Scala 3 brings. Now, one of the things that Scala 3 brings is a very, very controversial feature. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it's called, but um, it basically, um, instead of using curly braces, we can use the Python-based indentation, which basically means if we go to main, over here. Uh, so instead of like opening a curly brace and closing a curly brace, um, we can have a colon over here. Okay. And then we can just remove the curly brace. Okay. So it's still going to work um, exactly the same. Okay. And if, you know, if the scope gets too long, you can still end it, right? You can still end, uh, please end the main over here, right? So in terms of like lines of code, if you have like these ends, then it's going to behave exactly the same. Okay. Uh, but, but usually you would, you would leave it up like this. Now, this is a very controversial feature because, um, it feels like it should be more error prone. And in the beginning, I, as most people in the Scala community, uh, were, you know, we, we really disliked this, disliked this feature. However, now that I played with it, and I, I, I realized that the compiler actually has my back, pretty much. I, I didn't manage to construct a situation. I mean, I, was try, I wasn't trying like super hard, but I didn't manage to construct a situation where this syntax uh, would, would cause an issue. Let me actually show you what I mean. So the first thing that we're gonna try is we're gonna go to this print line, okay? And uh, we're gonna move it over here right let's see if it compiles it compiles and it also works exactly the same way okay so which is which is fine to me okay let's go over here let's go for example move this one all right so this one you know it doesn't compile right uh, and it and the the error message is uh, you know type mismatch so basically what, what's happening over here that it's it, it thinks that it now belongs to this maybe over here right so it thinks that it's that it looks like this all right, which it doesn't. Now you might think that we got lucky because we were very disciplined and we specified this type over here. So let's remove this type. So we're gonna see exactly the same thing, right? So let me remove the curly braces, right? Basically the, the types don't match. So essentially the compiler has your back, okay? Name int ID, okay, like this, right? And you, like, as already mentioned, like so far, I did not manage to, uh, to run into any issues, okay? So another thing that we can do is, for example, let's take this one and move it the other direction, right? still doesn't compile okay so uh what we're going to do now is we're going to convert the entire thing to to the syntax and this is going to shave off uh, a couple of more lines as well and by the way the way this this works is that like in python you need to like uh, agree on like how many spaces you have over here uh so over here it doesn't doesn't really care right so as long as it's indented to like the same level it doesn't care whether it's spaces or tabs okay so you can do whatever you want just make sure that that it's all at, at the same level all right so for example if we go to maybe um, so as of right now, for example, we have like 23 lines of code. Okay. So over here, we're getting like one line of code for us. Okay. Just throw it away. But over here, look, we have like these three curly braces. We can throw all of them out and we can just do that over here. Just replace them with a column, column, column over here. And the same thing over here. All right. So, um, what's up? I did not need the column over there. Right. So like this. 
cool okay so um, the rules are pretty pretty uh, pretty similar right so once you start like a new scope uh, everything else needs to be indented uh, to this scope okay so if you do that it's not gonna work there is tiny there is a tiny exception for for matches right so for the matches you can actually go and move it under right but this is this is just an exception for for the matches and again if you kind of don't like this you, first of all you can still use the curly braces and if you want to you know use the new syntax but you know your scopes are too large then you can still go over here and over here you can end the scope for the uh, match i believe it should be over here right this one would be and you know we're going to end the given and this one is going to end uh, the maybe all right like this so you can still have all of that stuff but why would you just throw it out unless you have like really crazy long scopes cool and the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to the dsls do the same thing basically every time we're opening the curly brace we can just say colon and every time we have the closing curly brace we can just remove the line okay so much much shorter okay i know it's kind of you know you kind of need to like get used to but it's the same thing with everything like everything that doesn't look familiar you need to get used to. i remember when i started using fira code i love the way that you know that you have like these, these these fancy arrows but like the font itself was just different so it took me a couple of hours just to get used to it um i believe once we start playing around more with this uh we're actually gonna enjoy it um enjoy it a bit more in fact uh let me actually go over here so this is the old version with scala 2 and we're gonna go and we're gonna go over here we're gonna create a new terminal um, just like this okay and i have an alias called scala lines okay so what it does is it, it goes into the current folder it uh, looks through the folders that you know that only through the source source folders right so it doesn't look in the package uh, i'm sorry in the you know in the build file and, and and whatever it looks only into the scala files and counts lines okay so if i just do scala lines we're going to see that we have like 63 lines and um in scala 3 we're going to have like way less and one of the reasons is that with we threw out the entire package object right so remember like this this syntax saved us a lot of code okay so uh we're going to go over here and we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to say scala lines and we went from 63 to 49 right so this is like 22 percent less code which i think is awesome and because you know because we're in a statically typed language and because the compiler helps us out so much uh i really believe that it's i don't know i'm kind of getting used to it i really I, i'm really starting to like the syntax I, I really hated it in the beginning when it was just proposed i was like what the hell but but now that i'm looking at it it's actually kind of cool also eventually tools like uh, scala fmt and scala fix uh, are gonna help us out a little bit with this right so for example as of right now right, right so if i um if I were to like copy paste this from somewhere and I would just throw it in here in Scala 2, you know, Scala FMT would just fix it for me, the indentation. Uh, as of right now, it, it doesn't over here, right? So as of right now, it's like a little bit annoying, but um, it's going to get better. It's going to get better with proper tooling. Okay, so I really, I really believe in, in this, um, in this new syntax. All right, so great. My neighbors turned on the music. I'm not sure if you can actually hear this because I can always hear it, but uh, I'm using a dynamic microphone and it's, uh, it doesn't pick the things, these things up usually. Okay. I hope that you can hear this stuff. All right, cool. So we're done with this first example. Let's actually go through the second example, which is going to be much, much shorter, right? We're pretty much done with the, with this video. Okay. And this, um, this, this thing that I want to show you is the ability to have multiple implicit parameter lists, which is, which is a godsend for, for tagless final. Okay. It's going to be really really confusing because i found like many things that i that i just couldn't answer to myself okay so we're going to go to the main and we're gonna uh let's actually throw all of all of, all of this okay so uh by the way we're going to start uh, using this syntax from now okay so uh let's say that we had uh two more dsls you know they're not going to have any any vows or def, def i just need um i just need a couple of dsls okay so this is going to be a dsl for f and why does it show me this hold up Okay, that's just a VS Code thing. All right, cool. So uh, now we're going to have like two implicit vowels for them and the, the syntax for that is, is given and we don't need a name because it's going to be, a, one of the givens is going to be for this one. The other one is going to be for that one. Okay, so we don't need to specify the names. We're just going to say, it's going to be a given for an F as DSL1. Okay, and by the way, just as a reminder, I'm, I'm not showing you like probably, I'm showing you probably like even like only the half of all the improvements of the implicit in Scala 3. Uh, as a reminder, this is not the proper introduction to all the things implicit in Scala 3. Okay, it's just the relevant things for, for the tagless final style. All right, so let's write a program. Let's say that this program would need, I'm going to call it program 1, that this program would need like all of these DSLs. It's going to need the DSL 1 and it's going to need the DSL to, and let's also say that it's going to need the applicative DSL. All right, let's say that it wants an int, int, 
and string, and it's just going to tuple them. It's going to produce an f of int and a string. Man, this music is really loud. I'm really worried that you guys can hear this. All right, so we're just going to do that over here. Okay, applicative, applicative, like this. All right, so now we can call it. All right, so this is like, so far, this is pretty much the same as in Scala 2. Okay, so we're going to do program one. We're going to say that our app is going to be maybe. We're going to give it like 1337. And we're going to give it hello world, right? Nothing, nothing like super crazy. Okay, so uh, we're going to have a different version of it where we're not specifying the type over here. And now over here, right, so this is just an implicit parameter list. Okay, so we can stay, you know, instead of... Um, uh, implicitly, we can say summon, right? Summon. Uh, please give me the DSL one for maybe. Please also let me let me copy this one. Okay. Please give me the second one. And please also give me the one for the applicative. Applicative. All right. Cool. So all of this works. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, um, it doesn't work um, with the type inference over here, right? So if I clone this line and if I specify the maybe over here, maybe over here, then I should be able to uh, remove all of these types, right? And this one, and this one, and this one, right? But for some reason, it doesn't work. Okay. It does work, however, if I use implicitly. Okay. Right, so probably once we arrive at Scala 3.1, and you know, it's it's gonna it's it, you know the summon is gonna improve. Uh, I don't know, or, or maybe not. Like at this point, I, I like in, in very often I wasn't really sure if what I'm doing is wrong, right? So if it's a bug or if it's a feature, okay? But it is what it is as of right now. Now it's a very common issue to to have. Uh, to, to need more implicits. However, these implicits are not DSLs, right? So they're not parameters with a type. Let me give you an example. So let's say that we're gonna have a final case class, some DB config. Okay, it's gonna have a URL string, password, password string. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to to write the same program. Okay, over here. Program. Program two, and we would love to be able to do something like this, right? But it's not gonna compile, right? Because like DB config, it doesn't have a parameter, right? Compare them with this, with the DSLs, right? And you know, in in Scala two, like what what you would want to do, you would want and uh, you know to go over here and add another uh, implicit parameter list, right? So you would want to go and say something like, uh, you know, using DB config, and in Scala two, it's not gonna work in Scala. work in Scala 3 it will work so let's say that we had a, a config like this uh, given right so we we do something like this right so we're gonna have DB config config it's gonna be you know some URL I'm not sure why I have a space over here some URL and we're gonna have a super secret password over here then we would be able to do a print line program 2 right same thing for maybe in fact let me actually save us some time Let's actually do uh, this like that okay so we're just going to go program two and it should work exactly the same right so it's going to find this this in instance it's going to put it over here in fact let, let's actually maybe uh maybe go ahead and use it so let's do uh let's produce a tuple with in string and db uh, config over here let's give it a name let's call it c and let's use it over here c like this all right so as you can see it it, it works now, in this particular case, actually, what happened was that it didn't add another parameter list that was implicit. It actually merged them. All right. So if we were to basically try and do something like this, okay, like that, let's have a two over here and let's not forget to summon the config, which would be over here. Please summon the DB config. And over here, you see that, right? So. The, the config doesn't have this parameter, okay? So over here, you kind of have a proof that uh, basically this parameter list was merged with this one. Again, the same thing, if I remove all of these types, it's not gonna work, but if I use implicitly, then it will work. Okay, so if I do that, if I do that, if I do that, and that, it's not gonna work, right? However, if I use implicitly, implicitly, then it's gonna work. Oh yeah, I forgot to actually specify the type. So let's let's do the other one first over here. And this one is for the maybe. All right, and it doesn't work. And, and this one is for the maybe, and it should work. Come on, please work. There we go. 
Now, as I already mentioned, in this particular case, the uh, the list got merged, but I told you, you can actually have multiple parameter lists. So you can go over here and you can say, uh, I want to have another one, right? So you can say, I want using, and I want over here, I'm going to call it D, for example, using D, it's going to be a string. Let's also put it over here as well, like this. Let's put the D over here as well, right? So now it's not going to compile without, without the D. Let's actually remove this guy, these guys, and and these guys. Okay, so that's not going to compile. However, as soon as we have a given as a string equals high, it's going to compile, right? So now you can have uh, multiple implicit parameter lists, which is which is really really cool. All right, so in this particular example where we're using you know a string or a DB config as a third wheel, um, however, I want to revert to only only using the DSLs to show you to show you the next example, which is going to be super super confusing. Let's throw out the config and let's throw out this string over here like this. So what I want to do is I want to have the using over here. I want to have the applicative for f over here, and therefore I can throw this out. Okay, and we're going to have this, and we're going to have cd like this okay so uh what's up we don't need a column like that like that all right cool so we pretty much have um this this way and this way and as i have already shown to, uh, to you like both of them they they just get merged however for for some reason so if i were to go over here and i would create a program three okay and if i were to merge them manually right so if i were to say that i'm going to use the dsl1 and dsl2 and applicative like this okay so we're gonna remove that okay then uh, for some reason uh, for F let's not forget the F let's not forget the F so now I should be able to uh, to do something like um, these guys over here right so I should be able to go here do that that like this and do three over here three over here now if i did everything correctly then the first one should work but for some reason the second one is not going to work for some reason i can't uh you know i'm not able to um to specify these guys let's actually try this was implicitly because i believe that was if i just replace these summons was implicitly then it should actually work no implicit argument of type no i believe i got it to work somehow i think if i was using implicit over here yeah so now if i'm not now that i'm using implicit i need to specify the names a b c oh no we already have a b c let's do x x y z over here All right yeah, so I believe like th th this way it actually worked, right? So for some reason was using it didn't work. I, I, I'm pretty sure that this is a bug at this point. Okay, uh, let me switch this back to using, to using like this. Okay, and do it like that. Oh, actually, I'm getting an idea now. Like maybe it's actually somehow related to the names. Okay, so maybe maybe with the names it would work somehow. Okay, let's try that. Let's go summon no didn't help this guy also didn't help all right so let me revert that let me revert that and let me revert that all right so for the last part it's going to be even even more confusing so let's grab um let's grab the first one okay so let's grab the first one this is going to be program four program four like this all right so um as we as we have already seen right so this is basically saying that you know there's going to be a, there's going to be a second parameter list which is which is going to have like a bunch of implicits okay but remember that this uh you know current application syntax is just a syntactic sugar for um for a function that has only one parameter list and then it returns a function that takes all of that and returns that okay so if you were to do this with the syntax we would do something like this it would say over here that it's going to return it's going to return a function that would take the dsl1 dsl1 it would take the dsl2 and it would take the applicative right so all of them are for an f for an f for an f and then it would return all of these guys right so this is this is like almost the same thing but um they're not implicit anymore right and so um the uh you know like usually like what you would do in in, in scala 3 or something uh, in scala 2 you would say implicit over here right and i believe actually in scala 2 like this code would actually compile um but over here it doesn't and 
the way the way you make it compile is by having a question mark over here which I don't really like right but essentially if you have a question mark over here this basically means that this entire thing is going to be provided um, implicitly okay and a big change is that the the fact that it's implicit is now recorded in the type of the function right so it's not it's not a function one anymore uh, I believe it's called implicit function one or something like this or, or, or given function one I don't remember how it's actually called no I believe it's called a uh, context function it doesn't really matter how it's called. The point is that uh, it has a type now, right? So the fact that the parameter list is implicit is now recorded in the type. Therefore, you can abstract over it by creating, for example, something like an alias. So let's say that you have like many functions and many of these functions, they they all depend on DSL1 and DSL2, right? So you have some sort of like a, like a common version of them, okay? So what you could do is you could do something like this. You could say, okay, so these are my common ones commons for f and a okay right and you would say that it's going to be like dsl1 and dsl2 like like for just let, let's say that let's say that all of them are common right so let's um let's take for example uh, this and do that over here okay so you can just do that and if you do that then you can just remove all of that stuff and you can just say that this is going to be a common common fa okay it should behave exactly the same way uh, our a is the tuple in string Okay, like this should behave exactly the same way, right? Now, you, because you can have multiple implicit parameter lists and because implicit parameter lists are also gonna get uh, merged, what you can do is you can say that, let's say that only like these two are the common ones. So you will be able to remove the applicative from here, for example, and you will still be able to add it, for example, over here, right? Or for example, over here, you know, as we had it before, you know, using um, applicative, right? So you have like more, uh, more flexibility, okay? Something like this. Right. However, uh, when I was trying to call it, uh, I only managed to call it uh, like this was this one was this syntax. I never managed to call it. I never managed to call it was was anything else. OK, so as long as I'm providing like everything implicitly, uh, everything worked. But if I if I try to specify them explicitly, it's it's not going to work. And this is also where I'm going to just um, uh, end this video just as a reminder you know Scala 3 is is, is still not stable uh, these things are going to be improved uh, you know once it's going to be released you know I'm going to make up you know proper video about this again and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah for now as always it's been Vlad devinsidey.com don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you learn something today consider supporting me on Patreon and thus watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else and most importantly take care